Today on Bits, we're going to talk about soldering. It can be used in lots of different ways, but most commonly connecting electronics components, jewelry making, or connecting roof flashing or gutters on a house. Soldering forms a surface-to-surface -surface bond that is electronically conductive and gas and airtight. You don't need a lot of equipment, but you do need some solder or filler metal. You need the two pieces of metal that you want to connect together and a heat source like a soldering iron or a gun. When you purchase your soldering iron or gun, it will probably come with different tips to put on it, and those are useful in a lot of different situations. In an industrial setting, there are some other heat sources like wave tanks and ovens, but we're not going to talk about those here. When you're selecting a soldering iron, there's a huge range of options in a huge price range. These go all the way from five or ten dollars all the way up to a couple of hundred. The biggest difference from the low end to the high end ones is really about the maximum temperature and the the ability to change that temperature while you're working. You definitely don't need to get the most expensive iron to get started, but the more work you do, you may find it's worthwhile to upgrade. Even having a good tip on the end of a cheap iron can make a pretty big difference. When you go to select your solder, there are a lot of different types and a lot of different thicknesses, and those are used for different things. If you have really fine work, you want very small solder. Some of them also have a flux core additive, and that helps the solder flow better. We'll talk about that in just a few minutes. Most electronics work uses tin and bismuth or tin and silver, but there's also tin and lead, which is a general purpose, and tin and zinc, which is great for aluminum. Although tin is the most common, you may see reference to some other types based on lead, cadmium, silver, or zinc. Those all have very specific uses for different temperatures and different material types. The first technique that you need to learn is called tinning. And this is the process of covering the tip of your soldering iron and the work pieces with a little bit of solder. This helps prevent oxidation and any extra solder that you get on either of these pieces can be cleaned off with a damp sponge or a small abrasive pad, usually made out of brass. I mentioned flux earlier and that's something you should definitely be aware of. When you buy solder, it may have flux inside of it, but if not, you can always buy it separately and wipe it on the two surfaces that you're gonna solder together. This lowers the surface tension of the molten solder and helps it to flow easier. Now you're ready to apply the solder to your joint. This is the same process that we talked about in the brazing video. Using the soldering iron, you heat up the two surfaces that you wanna join together. Once they're up to temperature, then you apply the solder to that joint. The heat from those two pieces will melt the solder and it should flow into the joint that you're making. If you're using a very small tip and a thin piece of solder, you can get a really precise joint. And depending on how big your components are, that may be absolutely necessary. If you're not fixing an electrical component to a board, you may just need to connect two wires. And in that case, you wanna twist them together and then solder them. But you don't wanna leave that exposed. You need to insulate it with electrical tape or put some heat shrink tubing around it and use a heat gun to close it in. But once you're done soldering, one thing that's really important that a lot of people forget is to clean the tip of your soldering iron. It's a common problem for the tip of a soldering iron to be eaten away with corrosion over time. And a great way to avoid that is to retin the tip of your iron before you put it away. Soldering is a very forgiving skill because if you make a mistake, you can always heat up the joint and desolder it. There are some small plungers that you can use to suck up the solder off of a surface, but there's also a braided copper wire that will actually draw it in when you put it on hot solder. But like most things, the best way to get better at solder is just to practice. I hope this brief introduction to soldering was helpful to you guys, and if you've got some extra tips around soldering that you'd love to share with everybody, please leave them down in the comments. I've got a whole playlist of other bits videos right here for you to check out, and I'll be back later in this week with a new project. I'll see you then.